This question seems very, very confusing. Um, if I had answer choices, I might be able to guess and check and make much more sense of it, but because I don't, I really have to just do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, I think the problem for most people is you won't know where to get started. For me, it's very obvious because that phrase, no solutions, just jumps right out of this question. It's so obvious what they want just by seeing those two words. Basically, this system of equations is a set of lines. And with lines, there are really only three possibilities. In most cases, they're going to intersect one time, right? Think of two lines. If you draw, draw two random lines, they're going to cross at some point. In order for them to have no solutions, that only happens when the lines are parallel. And that only happens when they have the same slope. So suddenly, we've got a plan. Just by looking at those two words and kind of translating them, I want to see the slope of these two lines. Unfortunately, the equations have been jumbled into a giant mess. And so my first task is like, let's jumble them back, okay? Let's bring them back to the safe place that we want them to be, which is y equals mx plus b. And since we know we're talking about slopes, we're gonna really focus on the m, okay? So let's start with the equation that doesn't really have many problems. We're gonna have 48x minus 72y is equal to 30y plus 24. So we're trying to get this to y equals mx plus b. Um, the y can be on either side, so my gut tells me let's add the 72y so we can get rid of that negative. Let's subtract the 24. So it's going to go away here, go away here. 48x and 24, those are going to stay separate. So that's going to be 48x minus 24, and now that's equal to 102y. So I'm going to have to divide both sides by 102 to get the y by itself. Now, I'm going to take a little shortcut here because probably in school your teacher would say, okay, we've got to divide everything. But since I only care about the slope, I'm really only interested in this number, the 48 over 102. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that um, on my calculator. Um, let's just divide. Yeah, I know how to use this calculator, but it's not easy for fractions. If I do 48 divided by 102, I get a weird number. A series of buttons I can hit is going to get me um, this number as a fraction, uh, which is 8 over 17. Okay, so this basically is uh, y equals 8 over 17x, and I'm just going to leave this as is, minus 24 over 102. I don't care about it. The y-intercept doesn't matter. In order to have no solutions, we're going to have different y-intercepts, so I don't care what they are. It's just not going to matter here. So really, I'm focusing on this, 8 over 17. So it's scary, but now we can do the same thing with the second equation to try to get that into y equals mx plus b. And luckily, the only thing I have to move is the r. So I can divide everything by r to get y alone. And now again, I'm only focused on the slope. So this is a little jumbled because the, the x term is second, where normally y equals mx plus b has it first. But that, again, it doesn't bother me. I'm just, I'm just focusing on the structure. I don't really care where things are placed. If I have y alone, then everything kind of makes sense to me. So now I have another slope, negative 16 over r. So what's really happening here is I need to compare the two slopes. They're supposed to be the same. And in math, when things are supposed to be the same, the way we phrase that is that they are equal. So this negative 16 over r, which is a mystery slope because I don't know the value of r yet, has to be equal to the slope of this other line, which is 8 over 17. They have to have the same slope. So now I can kind of see what's going on is I need to solve for r. So I'm going to cross multiply. 8r is equal to? 16 times 17, so that's negative 272, and divide by 8, and we get that r is equal to negative 34, and that is the answer. So yeah, this is a lot of work. Um, it's a little algebra heavy. Um, I don't love this question, but this is near the end of the hard module, so I should expect it to be tedious and time-consuming and, and kind of hard to think about. So um, as far as hard questions go, this is maybe kind of like a, a, a home run. I mean, it's pretty good for us because at least at the start, I knew exactly what I needed to do because that, that phrase, no solutions, 
has such a concrete meaning. So as soon as I saw that, I knew my plan. I knew it was going to take a lot of steps and a lot of work, but I understood the plan, and that's how it should be for you, is certain phrases in difficult questions hopefully kind of trigger you to just start on certain things and certain tasks. And if it's lines, y equals mx plus b is kind of where your brain should be like orbiting and getting back to. Um, it gets easier with practice. Uh, the SAT really likes this concept of the, of the number of solutions for a linear system. So there's lots of ways they can present that concept, but hopefully now you understand it so that you can recognize it and, and start to implement it on these hard questions.